investing friends, friends of financial freedom. Welcome into Investors Club as I check the audio. Checking the... Hello, investing friends, friends of financial freedom. Welcome into Investor Multibaggers. Got a great show for you. Biogen's Alzheimer's drug got approved, but with dubious data, we'll take a look at what some of the uh, lookers on are saying and uh, we'll compare to cassava's drug and uh, what it means for cassava's ability to be approved maybe early and combination therapies. We've been talking about the uh, potential for uh, co combining semifilam with uh, lakembi or aducanumab for that uh, matter, or even a different monoclonal antibody. And that some people are saying there's really good potential there. We'll take a look at that. Somebody in the multi-baggers discord uh, gave a pretty insightful comment. We'll take a look at that. We'll also take a look at the negative side. We have Dr. Carl Harrop and some others, friend of the show, uh, casting doubt on this approval. And then we'll take a look at the psychedelics. The psychedelics got a boost from the American Medical Association, giving them reimbursement codes for possible 2024 reimbursement. We'll take a look at that. The stocks are running on that. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Compass is up 7% on that news. There is GTII up 16%. Jake can fill us in. TG Therapeutics got a boost from uh, one of the houses, one of the investment houses saying, looks like the sales number is going to be twice as good as they're supposed to be. We've been saying this is a sales number story. It's why it shot up and more than doubled for us. Uh, the sales numbers haven't been as good lately. I guess that's why it came back a little bit, but looks like we're about to get some more numbers. IKT up more than 4%. Oncolytics up, uh, up, over 320, up to 325 now, just keeps on going. And cassava, look at all the green on this day. Not many down, but cassava is one of the few that are down, down 1.7% today. All right, let's leave it on, gosh, Compass is up more than 12% now. Let's leave it on cassava and go to the stories. Let's start with this. This is, Lakembi got approved. By the way, how did Biogen do on the approval? Nothing. Down 3% down 3%. So May 4th, it was at 317. And almost two months later, it is down, what, 10% or so. So, uh, so that's how that so the, the market is not loving it. Although maybe it was, it was all baked in, we'll see. Uh, here is Lon Schneider, MD, seems like everybody, everybody seems to either be towing the party line, like, wow, this is a new paradigm. This is like uh, when uh, the news uh, all says the same thing at the same time that I guess the White House says, here's what we're saying today. And some, some of the news outlets all say the same thing at the same time. Anyway, it seems like everybody that is for Lakembi is all saying the same thing. Uh, that they're, they are they, they kind of seem to be assimilated, maybe paid off. And then everybody else has their own opinion, like Lon here. Stat News hardly mentions the new restricted indication, contraindication, and black box warning. Remember a black box warning? This is the label. Their label was not as good as uh, they were hoping. They got approved, but a black box warning is about as bad as it gets. It is literally a big black box on the label saying, danger, danger, there's big risks here. And if you can, uh, look for another therapy, basically, uh, because there's big risk. It's a black box warning. It's about as bad as it gets. They continue to hype 27% relative change, which is not a statistic, rather than the actual 0.45 CDRSB statistical difference or the real 8% absolute difference from placebo. Uh, let's come back to that in a minute. Let's tell Harrop, friend of the show. We interviewed Dr. Carl Harrop, who wrote a book criticizing the amyloid hypothesis and the two decades and billions of dollars that Big Pharma spent and now the marketing campaign to force everybody to take these dubious therapies. Dr. Carl Harrop says, sorry, I've got a way in here. Today's was an inevitable decision baked into the cake a while ago when Lakembi's predecessor, Aduhelm, was given the fast track by the FDA based on lowering amyloid. Remember, amyloid plaques, everybody that has Alzheimer's has a buildup of amyloid plaques. Uh, they, there's, it seems like amyloid is probably useful when it's soluble and then it becomes insoluble and build, builds up in plaques. The idea is maybe it's toxic. Uh, maybe it's toxic. Maybe it's not toxic. 
uh, the idea uh, you can have. So everybody that has Alzheimer's, but it, it seems like it was maybe or maybe the problem was it was useful and now it's not. So maybe it's not really all that toxic. It's just it used to be useful and that's part of the problem. But uh, let's also remember that e so everybody that has Alzheimer's has a buildup of amyloid plaques, but not everybody that has a buildup of amyloid plaques has Alzheimer's. In fact, you can have such a buildup of amyloid plaques that they actually become a problem on their own. It's like CAA, uh, I forget what it's called, cardio, I forget what it's called, but, uh, and, and, and that could actually be a problem without even getting Alzheimer's. So anyway, so that's just some background. So they're lowering amyloid. Yes, they are. But is that the same thing as fixing Alzheimer's? Statistically significant but clinically trivial slowing of Alzheimer's decline is not improvement. Slightly less bad doesn't mean good. And the hazards are frighteningly real. I am quite worried that there will be needless deaths. I sincerely hope I'm wrong. And Dan Clinton weighs in strongly and says, you're not wrong. Prescribing lecane map is unethical and negligent. Anyone harmed by it will be a victim of malpractice. So then there's area, there's abnormalities related, uh, abnormalities related to imaging. Uh, they take, I, I forget, I, I can't remember, I can't believe, I can't believe I can't remember what area stands for. They take brain scans and there's abnormalities on there. And then there's either area E or area H. So there's edema or hemorrhaging, swelling or bleeding. So edema, so area E, a area with edema, swelling, 12.6% of people getting lecane mab, only 1.7% of placebo. Symptomatic area with edema, 2.8%. I mean, you're getting, it's, it's not just on the scans, you have symptoms. Area with nobody in placebo. Area with microhemorrhage, 14%, although there is 9% placebo. A lot of people, everybody, it seems, has small little bleeds here and there. Area with microhemorrhage, I guess this must mean uh, with symptoms, I guess. I'm not sure. Five to one, lecanemab to uh, placebo. And then serious infusion-related reactions, 1.2%. Serious infusion related actions. So there's a there's one in more than one in a hundred people are gonna have, it seems, one of these bad problems, I guess, is what the data is suggesting. And then uh so I asked in the in the I actually don't know what he means, this eight percent. Here is uh you know, I must have closed it. Let me grab it again. Here is the New England Journal of Medicine where lecane map was published. Results were published. And just visually, I can't get that to get any bigger. But just visually, look at everything go down. Doesn't look like too much of an improvement. And then, oh, wait about this one. That's, uh, that's amyloid. That's amyloid. Okay, great. Uh, anyway, I couldn't get, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out what that 8% was. I asked in the multibaggers Discord how smart the people are in the multibaggers Discord. Otter says, I'm not sure about the 8%, although they claim statistical significance. Is there based on the values? I do question the research. It's common to use imputation in modeling data, but this article does not expose the methodology of what form imputation was used. How much of the data was imputed? What method was utilized? Uh, these can have a bearing on the findings. Dropout rate was 17.2%. That's high. Kasav had quoted a less than 10% dropout rate in at least at one point in one of their studies. And a sensitivity analysis that evaluated the effect of missed doses was consistent with the primary endpoint analysis. An additional potential limitation was the use of modified intention to treat analysis without imputation of missing values. So modified intent to treat. Intent to treat is the standard. Uh, and anybody, uh, so who do you, do you, how, so when, when you start a study, and then, you, and then the, the study finishes and you give the data. Uh, who, who, what, what data do you give? Do you give everybody that was ever even uh, showed up ever to be a part of the study ever? Or do you give the data for only the people that showed up every time and did everything right? So uh, the standard is intent to treat. 
So you're supposed to do intent to treat because it more closely replicates real life. People aren't, don't act perfect in real life. I forget the name of the other way. The other way, way you can say, well, that's the real one, the people that follow the protocol. We should report that because that gives us the real answer about what happens when you follow the protocol. So that you could say that one has merit, but that's not the standard. The standard is intent to treat. They didn't do intent to treat. They did their, some version of modified intent to treat where they pick and choose who is included. That's horrible, horrible. However, a sensitivity analysis that was conducted with the use of standard intent to treat population with imputation yielded similar results. All right, fine. Here, so here is, so okay, how about, what, well, what if, uh, what if there is? What if, so what if there is some benefit? And like we've been saying, what if this is part, what if the real answer, the real solution for Alzheimer's, as many have suggested, is a cocktail? There's not one magic pill, but maybe a number of things. So maybe maybe uh, removing the amyloid is part of something, uh, uh, part of, of, of a broader picture, and then, then maybe it can fall into place of where you know, the therapy fits in. Deb in the multi-baggers discord, who uh, I'm not going to give any background on her. She's extremely insightful for good reason. In my opinion, and she gives really good uh, in, insights all the time. In my opinion, it might make more sense to go with a staged approach. Somifilam for a minimum of six months to firm up the filament A, then maybe some low-dose biologics to start sweeping off the towel. Brain might be more resilient at that point. So that's interesting that filament, perhaps somifilam, could make people more resilient to some biologics treatments. In this case, she says towel. Janssen has a biologic for towel. So uh, maybe, maybe not a combination with uh, Lecambi, Lecam maybe, but uh, maybe a combination with some other uh, biologic. For towel, that's interesting. Towel, remember... There, the hallmarks of Alzheimer's, there's three, there, there's, there, there's different, the, the people have different opinions, but generally speaking, there's three main hallmarks of Alzheimer's. One is the amyloid plaques, two is the tau tangles, uh, and three is the inflammation. But uh, amyloid plaques is a buildup of insoluble plaques, but it's outside the neuron. And the theory was these have a charge on them. And, you know, the, the electrical system having a charge sitting outside the neuron, well, that, that might impact the neuron, but it didn't seem to be right. But uh, the tau tangles, they were soluble uh, proteins, and then they got uh, insoluble and got all tangled up, and there's these tangles. Those are inside the neuron. They might be more important, and Janssen's going after them. So really interesting insights by Deb there. But this is just speculation on my part. I want to see toxicity data before uh, we know if it's even possible to do a combo. Maybe somifilam and some herbals like ginkgo bilboba or herbal beneficial for the brain may work as well or better than adding biologics. So really great insights there. Thank you, Deb. Uh, and then there is this. Here is MAPS. MAPS uh, is... I forget what MAPS stands for. MAPS is... Uh, they've been doing psychedelic... Uh, law change work since like the 80s or 90s for a long, long time. This guy, Rick Doblin, he's kind of famous. He was on Joe Rogan. This is the guy that started MAPS so long ago. It's really his work, it seems, from so long ago that it's kind of had a big impact uh, in, in helping laws be changed now. So anyway, MAPS is, it, MAPS is a big deal. If you're in the psychedelic space, you know about MAPS. It's a big deal. And so MAPS announced today that the American Medical Association has published language for the new current procedural terminology three codes for psychedelic assisted therapies. The codes are expected to go into effect when they're published January 1st, 2024. Once effective CPT codes will provide physicians and other qualified healthcare professionals a means to seek coverage and reimbursement for delivering psychedelic assisted therapy approved by US FDA. So here's, here, here's the CPT Category 3 codes. What are they? A set of temporary codes that allow data collection for emerging technologies, services, procedures, and service paradigms. So pretty interesting stuff. And that has since compass up 13% today, 13.8%. Uh, Remember, they got the uh, synthetic psilocybin, the uh, psychedelic mushroom drug, uh, for mental illness. It's looking really good in uh, treatment-resistant depression and really a lot of mental, other mental illnesses, post-traumatic stress disorder, anorexia, all sorts of stuff. Uh, 
And then what is the American Medical Association? They're a professional association and lobbying group of physicians and medical association, medical students, 1847 founded, 271,000 people promoting art and science of medicine and betterment of public health. So they're, they're a, just a professional lobbying group, but apparently they have sway. Sent Compass up 14%. All right, with that, my investing friends, let us go to the phones. La Holy says, does FDA grant BTD status automatically or company has to apply for it? They have to apply for it, and the FDA has 60 days to get back to them. Great insight as always, Joe. Thank you. You're very welcome, Sabrina. I love your uh, butterfly artwork. GLW, did you see the Motley Fool article that described the SAVA results released recently as so-so and less than impressive? What's the reason for that? Uh, for one, I, I put it in one of two categories. One, this is complex stuff. So just looking at the headline number of a 38% reduction, I guess they say, okay. But what they're missing, uh, for one thing, is that that's mixing in moderates that everybody knows is a different and much more difficult group to treat with the milds where they actually improved on an absolute basis, even though they had been improving on an absolute basis for a year, which is unheard of. We saw a friend of the show, Dr. Lewis Robinson's blog, where he said, you know, I've been treating as a, as a medical doctor, I treated more than 300 Alzheimer's patients and stayed with them for more than a year. And do you know how many of them improved? None. But on average, they're improving in the study. So really, so they, I, I would just say, well, for one thing, they don't understand. Or their, their big pharma paid off. We've seen a lot of that, it looks like. Morning, Joe. It's beyond puzzling why great results on Saba drive the price down. Yes, it is. Hello, Joe. What's your take on Sava's cash, cash position going forward as they progress with developments? Thanks. They've got, it's a good question. They've got, what, more than $150 million and the trials are mostly enrolled. Uh, should, I think it'll be enough to get through at least the first of the phase threes. Though maybe they, I, I, I would imagine, uh, I think they'll probably raise money some more before the, before the end, but they're doing pretty good. More than $150 million, so pretty good. But sometime in the next 18 months, I bet they raise. Hey, Joe, Truthful's 20-page article hits the nail on the head and says it all. Fantastic job indeed. Yes, but I'm not going to sit here and read a 20-page article. Uh, Truthful Hand, uh, the, 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 he does great work, no question about it. Uh, maybe we can break that up into something else and, and use it for good work. But I don't know about, I don't, I don't know if people want to see, see me just read a 20-page article. Uh, Joe, good morning, Keith and Suzanne. An article on Yahoo said Saba dropped because that was a lower response rate than some other Alzheimer's therapies. Does that make sense? If you mix in the moderates, and I guess if you cherry pick, like with, uh, they did for like KaneMab, they had ADAS COG, CDR, uh, ADCS, uh, MCI, and ADCOMS. So I get uh, out of the four of these that are sort of similar, perhaps if you picked the best one, maybe it might have edged out cassava overall. Maybe not. Uh, but I don't. I don't think any. I don't think any fair analysis says that. John Sava, yes, they say well outside the range of historic placebo decline rates, but what if that must be taken within the context of not significant for sample size? What then? Remy, clarify this. I mean, come on, it's a small, it's a small, uh, small trial. Never was meant for statistical significance, uh, so it, it wasn't. It wasn't meant for statistical significance. It never was. I wonder if Lily's initiating MMSE matched SAVAs. We can check that on clinicaltrials.gov. And, and we have looked at that in the past. And it looked even like, even like it, for some of these, not only were they only going milds, but they were going like mild milds. Like they were, they were tr basically trying to find people that didn't have Alzheimer's, it looked like. I think people doing due diligence on SAVA come across Quintessentials Manifesto without knowing about the countersuit. Yeah, all of the FUD, the reason they do it is because it works. This is very complex stuff. And so propaganda and whatnot is going to work pretty well, at least for some people. So you flood the airwaves. With, uh, that's what they, they flooded every channel with their nonsense. Hans, the Motley Fool. Hans, Bobby. Ha, Motley Fool article is nonsense. They even got the basics wrong. They referred to Sava's phase three and claimed the results are inferior to monoclonal antibodies. 
they didn't even get the basics. Yeah, so yeah, it's a complex thing. If people are reporting on it uh, without even knowing. And if you're bearish, uh, they, might, they might even get paid and then they can be hide behind their confusion. So they, they, can, they, uh, they can take, I don't know, 5,000 bucks for to write an article uh, and, uh, and then then later and then people are like, wait a minute, this is misleading. Oh, I didn't understand. They can say, say they were confused and it's confusing stuff. What are you going to do? Say if they weren't confused, it's confusing stuff. All right, great to see you guys. We made it, uh, made it through the holiday week. Uh, interesting week. Uh, interesting week. And then who would have guessed cassava didn't even move after all of this? The, the results and cassava doesn't even move. And then and, and Biogen. How about that? Both cassava and Biogen have their results and they don't move. Neither of them moved. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's insane. All right. Good stuff. Uh, we'll see you guys in the Discord. Whoops. Uh, there's people typing in the Discord and I'm confusing it for the uh, uh, chat typing. All right, I'll see you guys in the Discord. Have a great night. Uh, sign up for the newsletter. I'll see you in the